Hi, I'm David Pintor and today we're going to talk about container storage and how to create and mount volumes that are persistent even after the container is deleted. So I'm going to run an Nginx container here and we, I'm going to specify with minus V a volume to be created inside the container that is going to call my web data. Okay, so the container is created and now we're going to check inside the container the contents of the folder obviously is empty. Now if we inspect the container um, we can actually see where the volume that has been created inside the container where is it mapped in in the host so if you look at the source here you can see the path where it's mapped now i'm gonna i'm gonna put that path in a variable let's check that is fine okay and now we're just gonna check locally that the folder is empty okay so just to check that is is properly mapped, we're going to create a file inside the container. And if we check inside the container, we do an ls. Now we can see that the file is there. So if we check locally, we can see that the file is there as well. Okay. So now we're going to create another container specifying a volume, but this time we're going to specify the location of the volume in the host. So in this case, it's going to it's going to be slash volume slash Redis files. So we're going to pull the Redis image, and now if we create a file locally inside slash volume slash Redis files, and we go and check in the container, we can see that the file is there. Okay. Now we're gonna make, um, sorry, we're gonna share a volume uh, from one container onto another container. For instance, if we look back at our web server volume we created earlier, um, you can see uh, the, the the source of uh, that volume, and we can see that there is a file inside that volume. So if we run another container for example a postgres container and we specify volumes from option and we say we want the volumes from our web server container it's going to pick up that volume and it's going to mount it in the container as well so we can check by doing an ls inside the db1 container that we just created and the file is actually there so it's been properly mounted from one container to another container We can also label our volumes if instead of using a local path, we use a string that doesn't commence with a slash. So in this example, we create a volume that will label my awesome volume, for instance. And now if we list all the volumes that we've created, we can see that my awesome volume is there. If we don't specify a name, the volumes are basically going to take a randomly generated name. Um, now, if we decide to clean up and, and stop and remove all the containers, we're going to remove all of them, we check nothing's running. Now we can see that the volumes are still present. So what does it mean? Basically, the volumes are going to be persistent. Even if we delete the, the containers, the volume are still there and they still hold the, the files that we created. So if we want to delete them, uh, we can do that with docker volume rm. Um, in order to delete only the volumes that are not attached, we're going to use the the option dangling to set to true. And now we can see that there is actually no volumes left because all of them were not attached to any container. So that's it for now. Thanks very much for listening. I'll see you in the next video.